Welcome to 5.3 Double Angle Formulas. We're going to talk about double angle formulas, and double angle formulas are a lot like sum and difference formulas in that we're trying to base our calculations on simpler calculations. Okay, So when we start to talk about what is the sine of 2a, we're going to look at what that actually means. Well, the sine of 2a is actually equal to the sine of a plus a, okay, because a plus a would be 2a. Well, when we use our sum and difference formulas to find out what this means, really what it gives us is sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine a. Well, if we use the commutative property and rearrange this just a little bit, let me show you what happens. I switched the order of these because in multiplication it doesn't really matter. 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2. So sine of a times cosine of a is equal to cosine of a times sine of a. Well, I notice that I have two of the same thing. And so this is my double angle formula. Right here. Okay, so when I ask what the sine of 2a is, it's going to be 2 sine a cosine a. Over here, let me show you something. It might be tempting to say that sine a, I mean sine 2a, is equal to 2 sine of a. But look at how this works. If we take a is equal to 30 degrees, the sine of 2a is equal to the sine of 60, right? Which we know is equal to square root of 3 over 2. But if we said 2 sine of a, that's equal to 2 sine of 30, which is 2 times 1 half, which is equal to 1. But square root of 3 over 2 is not equal to 1. So this this is not true, okay? Because it doesn't end up the same. So we have to end up with the same answer in order for this formula to be true. Okay, so knowing what we know about this sine 2a formula, here's what we're going to do. The sine of a is 3 fifths. a is in quadrant 2. So we're going to find the sine of 2a. Well, the sine of 2a is equal to 2 sine a cosine a. So we're missing this piece, so we have to find it. A similar strategy to yesterday, cosine of a is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared a. Square root of 1 minus 3 over 5 squared. And bringing all this down, we get square root of 1 minus 9 over 25. Okay. So this is going to be equal to 25 over 25 minus 9 over 25. Sidestep it here. Square root of 16 over 25, which is 4 over 5. Remember now, we are in quadrant 2. So if we look at this, we're going to be in this area here, which means it's cosine theta comma sine theta. So cosine is going to be negative, so this has to be cosine of a is equal to negative 4 fifths. And the sine of a is equal to 3 fifths. That was given to us. So all together now, everybody at once, the sine of 2a is equal to 2 times 3 over 5 times negative 4 over 5. And so we'll have 6 over 5 times negative 4 over 5, negative 24 over 25. Okay? So that's the sine of 2a right there. Okay? Going down to this next example. We are going to prove that sine x plus cosine x squared is equal to 1 plus sine of 2x. So what I'm going to do is this. 
I'm going to expand this, this left side because it looks the most complicated to me. And so this is going to be sine x plus cosine x times sine x plus cosine x. This is going to be great. You're going to love this. So when I distribute this using the FOIL method, I'm going to have sine squared x plus sine x cosine x. And then I'll do this next one plus cosine x sine x plus cosine squared x. Using the commutative property, I'm going to have sine squared x plus cosine squared x, taking these two pieces here, plus 2 sine x cosine x. See, because sine x cosine x is the same as cosine x sine x. Okay, so this right here, magical Pythagorean identity is 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x. This right here is a double angle formula, so I have 1 plus sine of 2x, which is what I want. Moderately sized check mark. Okay, so that's proved. In example 3, they want us to do something similar. Well, I notice on this side, we've got something that's that's pretty complicated looking, okay? And so I'm going to choose this. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to convert to sine and cosine. So I've got 2 times cosine x over sine x over 1 plus, put this in parentheses, 1 plus cosine squared x over sine squared x. Okay? Now, how do I how do I do this? Like we did like we've discussed in the past, our strategy is going to be to eliminate this denominator. We want to eliminate the denominator in the denominator. So on the bottom we have another denominator. So what we're going to do is eliminate that by multiplying the top and the bottom by sine squared x. So we're, we're multiplying by this to get rid of this denominator. So when I sidestep this, this is going to be two times cosine x over sine x times sine squared x. Okay. I am going to have 1 times sine squared x plus cosine squared x over sine squared x times sine squared x. I'm hoping that you see what's going to happen here because it's kind of glorious. This sign cancels. This is no longer squared. So on top I have 2 cosine x sine x and on the bottom I have cancel, cancel. On the bottom I have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Well, what that really equals is 2 cosine x sine x over 1, which I know is equal to, right here, this one right here, using commutative property, 2 sine x cosine x, which I know is equal to sine of 2x. Kind of cool how that works out, because that's what I want. This is great. Okay? We proved this. So I'm going to put a little check mark here. Okay? The next little piece is something that has three forms. The three forms of cosine of 2a. Okay? The three forms of cosine 2a look like this. We have cosine of 2a is equal to cosine of a plus a. Okay? So here's how this works. If we take the cosine of a plus a, we get cosine of a, cosine of a, minus sine of a, sine of a. When I reduce, I get cosine squared a minus 
sine squared a. That's my first form. Okay, so here's one of my forms. Okay, if I do this a little bit, if I if I continue to expand this, um, we are going to say let's write it in terms of cosine. So cosine squared a minus now sine squared a is really one minus cosine squared a, right? Using a Pythagorean identity, and so when I rewrite this. I'm going to have cosine, apparently it's so sine, cosine squared a minus 1 minus cosine squared a. Okay? Now, what I have is a, a negative here. So this is minus 1 and then minus a negative. So this is actually going to be a plus. So what I end up with is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. This is my second form. I subtracted a 1 and I subtracted a negative cosine squared a. So I have 2 cosine squared a minus 1. The third form is going to be a substitution here. So I'm going to say 2 times 1 minus sine squared a minus 1. So when I distribute this, I have 2 minus 2 sine squared a minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so 1 minus 2 sine squared a. That's my third form. Okay? Why do we need three forms? We use three forms because these three forms are going to allow us to solve different types of problems. Because notice, here I have both cosine and sine. Here I have only cosine. Here I have only sine. So if I'm ever given just a different type of problem where I only have, say, I don't know, sine, I can use one of my three forms. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the three forms here really quickly so that I have them. Cosine squared a minus sine squared a. My second form is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. My third form is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So when I go to solve an example like this, I notice that I only have sine. I have the sine of a is 1 over square root of 5. So I'm going to use the form that only involves sine because I'm trying to make my life easy. Okay? So I know that sine 1 minus 2 sine squared a is equal to cosine of 2a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute here. 1 minus 2 times sine squared. Well, the sine is 1 over square root of 5. So I'll square that. So I have 1 minus 2 times now this squared is going to be 1 over 5. So 1 minus 2 over 5. So this is 5 over 5 minus 2 over 5. It's going to give me 3 over 5 as my answer for what cosine is. So this is the cosine of 2a. Okay. One more example. We're going to do one more example here. And in this example, we've got something that looks extra complicated. But I notice here that I've got this cosine of 4x, and then I've got cosine and cosine, okay? So let's do a little bit of factoring first. The cosine of 4x is really equal to the cosine of 2 times 2x, right? So that really, this is a double angle formula, okay? So we are going to use the fact that this is a double angle formula to say the cosine of 2 times 2x is really equal to 2 cosine squared 2x minus 1 because 2x has now become my that's my double angle that's my angle that I'm doubling okay I used one of my uh, cosine forms to, to do this okay now cosine squared of 2x is really just another double angle formula. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to keep this outside. And inside, cosine squared of 2x is going to be cosine of 2x. This is a double angle formula. So I've got 2 times 2 cosine squared x minus 1 squared. Okay? Because I'm expanding this now. So Cosine of 2x is 2 times cosine of x minus 1, and I'm squaring that. 
So I still have minus 1. Now let's distribute. Okay? So what I have is this. 2 times 4 cosine 4 of x minus 4 cosine squared x plus 1 because see this comes from over here. 2 cosine squared x minus 1 times 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Okay. Now, still have this minus 1 on the end because I'm expanding. I just expanded this in here. When I distribute this, notice I've got 8 cosine 4 of x minus 8 cosine squared of x plus 2 minus 1. Well, this is 8 cosine 4 of x minus 8 cosine squared of x plus 1, which is exactly what I want from up here. Okay? Thanks for watching, guys. We'll pick up part two next time. We'll see you later.